my fellow Americans. Not long ago, I received a letter from a woman in the Midwest. She wrote, Dear Mr. President, in my humble way, I am writing to you about the crisis in Vietnam. I have a son who is now in Vietnam. My husband served in World War II. Our country was at war. But now, this time, it's just something that I don't understand. Why? Why Vietnam? Why Vietnam? Why Vietnam? Munich, 1938. German Chancellor Adolf Hitler arrives for a conference to be held here with British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain. This meeting will long be remembered, for it opens the door to the dreams of dictatorship. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. Peace in our time. A shortcut to disaster. But even then, this was no new lesson. It had stared us in the face with Mussolini in Ethiopia. Ethiopia's emperor, Haile Selassie, made his protest to the League of Nations, but nothing was done. We'd also seen the Anschluss in Austria, and nothing was done. Then in 1950, aggression was again unleashed, this time across the 38th parallel in Korea. But free men had begun to learn the lesson, and something was done. The lesson had been learned, and President Johnson had phrased its meaning well. Aggression unchallenged is aggression unleashed. Why must young Americans, born into a land exultant with hope and with golden promise, toil and suffer and sometimes die in such a remote and distant place? The answer, like the war itself, is not an easy one. But it echoes clearly from the painful lessons of half a century. Three times in my lifetime, in two world wars and in Korea, Americans have gone to far lands to fight for freedom. We have learned at a terrible and a brutal cost that retreat does not bring safety and weakness does not bring peace. And it is this lesson that has brought us to Vietnam. For the background to our involvement in Vietnam, we must go back to a shell-cratered place called Dien Bien Phu. Supplied only by air, completely surrounded by the opposing Vietnamese, French troops are fighting the last battle of a long war over what had been called French Indochina. It's a strange three-cornered struggle. Non-communist Vietnamese fighting communist Vietnamese, and some of both fighting the French. Thank you. 